little muck bass. Tournament fishing tips next on Delaware Valley Outdoors. There we go, guy. Okay. There we go. That's a little one. But That's a little one, yeah. It's all right. Look at the black spots on him. Yeah, look at it. Look at his, look look at his it. tail down there. Oh, there's the fish we're looking for. Now, look at that spot on that. Let's look at that for a second. Oh, we got it here. Yeah. Look at the spots on that. Now, what we talked about this, is this more of a springtime uh, phenomenon that they have the black spots on they them? They seem to come out of the, uh, the winter period with more well, black, black spots. spots yeah. on them. Um, a lot of fish this time of year will have those black spots That's on them. But there's nothing wrong with the fish. Nothing I want to make sure that everybody wrong. understands that there really isn't nothing at all wrong in the fish. I mean, no. they got black. He's got black spots right on the top of his head and back here on his tail. tail. And but, but the quality of the fish is is good. Yeah. You can see, it's good. Yeah. Healthy oh, it's healthy, fish. healthy looking fish. And he hit a, a, a yeah. He a little, you know, just a purple worm and a, a split, split shot split rig. Them. Yeah. Working About twelve it. inches uh, up on the split shot and. Working it slow. This That's time it. of year, you need to work your bait nice and slow. That's it. Well, He's good and chunky, yeah. or she's good and chunky, yeah, I guess. Yeah, she is. Well. Delaware River. Delaware River. Hey, nice fish. All right, Gar, we're on a piece of structure now that you kind of mention how unique it is because of what it is and how to fish it. Let's just talk a little bit about what we have in front of us here. Well, you've got a uh, steel bulkhead which the sun has been beating on and the water's rising on it, which means you've got hot steel with the cold water coming around it. Therefore, the water around that, that bulkhead right there is a little warmer. The fish are going to pull in on that and attract to that. The so other early, early springtime? Early springtime, the steel walls are real good. Um, on a rising tide, because the steel has been attracting the heat all morning long. So as the as the water comes up on it, the water warms because more of the steel's been out of the water, and the fish will start to move on to it. That's right. It's give, it's giving them a little warmer uh, situation, just like a radiator in your home. You know, you'd probably get near that in the winter time if it's had a hit there. And now we're flipping, uh, flipping jigs, flipping worms. What, uh, what do you suggest? Well, we got some small worms here because the fish are still a little inactive and we're working them real slow. There's also some wood pilings that are down there, which also helps attract the fish to them also. Um, those little indentations in that steel wall uh, <laughs> will actually uh, Make you know give, give the fish a little pocket to sit in too, uh -huh. you know. So you want to you want to pitch your worm right into the pocket, and don't miss one either because <laughs> uh, the one you miss might be the one where the fish is at. And you could also come along here with a crankbait or, or something like that to parallel it. Parallel it, yep, yeah. yep. Parallel it. You can end up saving a lot of time. We've found so far this morning that we haven't really had too much activity on a fast moving bait so we're sort of slowing down here a little bit and um, but if the fish are real active uh, yeah you can parallel it with a spinner bait or a crank bait and uh, pull one out of those little steel pockets and one of, one of the things we were, we're talking about right now we're at a high tide or uh, right just basically at the high tide 
and you had mentioned that um, we want to get a tide that's moving. We don't want a, a dead high tide here because there's really, uh, we've, we've had some bites, but they've all come when the tide's been moving. That's right. Yeah, we're running out of tide here. It's uh, almost totally dead high. The, the action has slowed. Um, we're going to have to make a move and, uh, and find some moving tide. Now, Garrett, we talked, you're in a tournament. You know there's fish here. I know there's fish here. Do we stay here and wait it out, or do we make the run? Well, uh, that's always a, a real question that we all like to answer correctly, <laughs> uh, especially in a tournament. Um, my, my theory is you're going to have a couple hours of probably dead fishing. So um, you're running out of time in a tournament. If you've only got a little bit of time left, um, and you can't make the run and, and, and get to your spot and get back to the weigh-in site in time, you, you, you're probably going to have to camp out here and wait. Um, but if you've got time to make the run and uh, you know there's fish in another spot further south or north, mm -hmm. depending upon what, what your tide's doing, mm -hmm. then, uh, then uh, you know, like I said, do make the run if, if you have the time. Mm -hmm. I know one of the things that we've often talked about is, is when to make that choice. You stay just a little too long at one time, and you said, "Oops! I should have went. I should have went sooner. I should have went sooner." Yeah, that's uh, that's always a, a question that we don't know, um, and that's really where uh, where sometimes winning or losing the tournament uh, makes a difference. Makes sense because with tidal fishing, you uh, you uh, could be in a spot, and in 15 minutes, you could have your limit. Bucks County Outfitters is one of the largest selections of fishing equipment in the Upper Bucks area, including rods, reels, tackle, live bait, fly fishing, saltwater supplies, and licenses. Bucks County Outfitters will repair your broken rod or reel and will buy your complete used tackle boxes, rods, reels, and lures. Not just for fishermen, Bucks County Outfitters features a full-service deli with delicious breakfast sandwiches, plus steaks and hoagies. Bucks County Outfitters is open every day starting at 5 a.m., located at Route 313 and Fitz Streets, Perkesee. The Outdoor Shop in Quakertown offers everything you need for your fishing and hunting supplies. We specialize in used bows and handmade gun and rod racks. For the fishermen, we feature jigs, spinners, sinkers, flies, and hand-packed live bait. We're open early seven days a week for your convenience. You can also purchase your hunting and fishing licenses at the Outdoor Shop. Don't just count on luck. Visit the Outdoor Shop before you fish or hunt. And while you're there, you can try your luck on the instant lottery. There's only one fishing lure proven to catch all these fish and virtually every species of game fish in North America. It's the Banjo Minnow, the world's first and only genetic response fishing lure. Hello everybody, I'm Bill Dance. But well, I'm here to tell you, the Banjo Minnow is truly the most exciting thing I've seen in a mighty long time. The Banjo Minnow will outfish every fishing lure in existence today. We had made a fishing lure that actually made fish bite even if they weren't hungry. And it works. It's amazing, totally amazing. I've not missed a fish on the banjo minnow. Just is amazing. It's just unbelievable. Have your credit card ready and call now to order the complete 110-piece banjo fishing system. You get 24 banjo minnows in three different sizes and four colors. Banjo weedless bait hooks, counterbalanced jigs, and much, much more. All yours for only $29.95. For faster service, have your credit card ready and call the number on your screen right now. This bait is phenomenal. Gary, in a tournament, how far will you, uh, will you travel uh, in, you know, on, on a, a day tournament? Well, um, you know, obviously you have to play the conditions of the wind and what, what you're up against, whether it be harsh weather or uh, heavy winds. But, uh, you know, in the Delaware River, I've run as far as uh, um, 50 miles in one direction. Um, you know, sometimes you have to play the tides and uh, you have to run way south to get the tide and chase the tide all the way north. And by the time you're done at the end of the day, you could have run 50 miles. So you, you, know? can, you can actually go a pretty good distance uh, oh, yeah. in, in a day's a day's days running. Yeah, there's actually people that have talked about a, even going from uh, any tournament that might be around Philadelphia all the way down through the DNC Canal into the upper portion of the Chesapeake. I know uh, 
I know of a few people who have done it, but uh, personally, I am not. Well, that's a long run. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm with Gary Wimmer. Gary, Gary's president of Highway Marine up in Quakertown, and Gary invited us down to Delaware River to do some bass fishing, but with the uh, take on tournament fishing. Gary fishes a lot of tournaments, very successful tournament fisherman, and he said he'd like to maybe get together with us sometime and uh, show us some tips and techniques about how you read the water, uh, uh, as, as far as going into a tournament. It's a lot different than just pleasure fishing. You have to read tides, you have to read water conditions, and uh, we're out here today and we're finding a little success on, uh, what are we finding success on today, Guy? Well, we've actually caught a few on some spinner baits and uh, mainly worms. The uh, four inch worms are, seem to be doing the best. And uh, when I'm practicing for a tournament, that's mainly what I'm looking to do. I'm trying to find what the pattern is, um, you need to find, obviously, spots you're going to fish, and um, when you go to those spots, you want to obviously try to catch a fish or two and see what the quality of the fish is, whether or not they're just small fish. And so far today, uh, we've, we've found a lot of buck bass. We haven't really got any of the big females yet, and we're still looking, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll come across some eventually. And again, you mentioned the important word, patterning. How, which is very difficult for some guys to, to figure out how to pattern uh, what's going on. Uh, we've been moving around, changing baits, weights, sizes, colors, uh, until we've come up with at least a combination that's starting to pick up, up some fish. Yeah, the, um, you know, the pattern I had a couple weeks ago was a good shad crankbait pattern, and, um, and I guess we did catch one or two fish on that so far. But it already seems to have changed to, a, to more of a worm pattern right now. And we're only talking about a week and a half later after I fished a tournament down here uh, a, a little bit ago and, and didn't do too bad with. And there were some big fish caught. Yeah, we had some real nice stringers caught. Uh, there was actually some five pound plus fish that were brought into the weigh-in. And for the Delaware River, a five pound plus fish is a great, is a great fish. Yeah, we have a lot of structure that we've been fishing, but not all structure is the same. What, what do you look for in, in some structure on the river like this? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> obviously it depends upon the time of the year, and the reason we're uh, in a lot of the backs of these coves right now is because this is where the fish spawn in the spring, in the backs of these coves, and as long as they have enough water in the back, they need to be fairly deep in the back. They can be totally blocked off in the front, and that does happen to some of these when, at low tide, but they need to have water left in the back of them uh, at uh, low tide. Mm -hmm. And if they have structure back there, which is what you're talking about, mm -hmm. it can be either stone or it can be you know, rocks or, or wood, and the fish are normally on them because that's where they're uh, getting ready to spawn or done getting spawned. It's done spawning. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're just looking for structure in the back of these coves that hold water even at low tide. And so that's why you, you need a good depth finder to, to make sure you can oh, yeah. lo locate the, the, uh, the good bottom. Yeah. I know you had mentioned that there's a hole on the other side of that that stays deep all the time. Yeah, exactly. There's, uh, there's a section right here, a wall that's fallen down and um, behind it uh, is an eroded hole, um, and the fish will actually go through, go through the areas to get this hole back there, actually uh -huh. spawn back out there, and then they'll come out here and stage out front where we're fishing right now. Now you mentioned also that, again, we're, it's springtime, well, it should be almost summer, but this year it's been <laughs> quite cold, so the fish are still back in these coves, but then uh, as the summer progresses, they move out of here. That's right. Yeah, come come summertime, these slips down here. Uh, you know, we're down in Philadelphia, 
Um, these slips down here get pretty tough to fish because the fish move out on the main river in the summertime and they're a lot tougher to find out in the main river because there's just so many pilings and things that they hang on that are, uh, there's just so many of them. But right now they're more concentrated in the backs of these coves and that's why it's pretty good fishing down in these slips in the spring. And one reason that we, we moved down towards Philadelphia was that we wanted to catch a, 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 a dropping tide, give us a little bit more of a, a, a water movement back in here. Yeah, when we left the other spot, we were almost a totally dead slack tide, maybe with a little bit incoming. And we ran uh, 19 miles, almost 20 miles south, and we've already got a, a falling tide that's already fallen about uh, well, almost two feet. Yeah. And uh, that's what we're looking for. The lower tide does concentrate the fish more for us. Pulls them back out. So it pulls them back out off the banks and stuff, and it'll concentrate them on the structure. Again, you got to have a little bit of structure for them to hide on. All right, Gary, we're out here practicing for a tournament, but you do fish a lot of tournaments uh, yourself, and you sponsor some tournaments. Highway Marine sponsors uh, some tournaments. Tell us about some of the tournaments that you guys you sponsor. Well, uh, the one that I uh, enjoy the most, uh, I fish with my wife, uh, is the uh, ABA, American Bass Association. Um, they have a, uh, a great uh, circuit for this area. Uh, we do fish uh, quite a few different areas. Uh, that we never fish the same spot uh, twice in one year. Um, we go from the Potomac to uh, the Susquehanna Flats to the Delaware River to Lake Long Paul Pack to the Hudson River um, and uh, Lake Apacon. And uh, they do have a great championship at the end of the year where they give away a boat motor trailer. Um, they pay up to 10, 15 places. And um, it's a great championship to, to be part of. And then I also sponsor a Highway Marine uh, Classic that uh, we're having again this year on the Hudson River for the top 20 teams in the Mar a ABA, American Bass. And um, if you qualify to be one of the top 20 teams, you're eligible to fish it. And uh, that's another uh, little bit of extra thing that I do for ABA. And I think, uh, I know a lot of guys always ask us about the tournaments and stuff like that. But if you really wanted to learn to be a better fisherman, I think I really suggest that you join, get into a tournament. You're not going to win the first time you're out, but you will pick up some tips from from the guys that you're going to fish with, go as a rider, and boy, I'm telling you, I've, the amount of guys that I've always fished with, they're always helpful. They'll always show you places, they'll tell you stuff, different techniques, uh, maybe even a special lure that they might share with you, and uh, I think it just helps your fishing. If you're interested in uh, getting some more information, we're going to put the numbers up where you can call and get uh, more information about the tournament schedule and, and stuff like that. And I really suggest that you, you know, get out there. You don't have to have a boat. Go as a rider. Uh, and uh, boy, I'm telling you, you'll pick up some great tips. How about there if I go. catch this fish for okay. you while we're here? He is. <laughs> okay. You can catch that fish. Huh? Here's one of those fish again with the black spots on that we talked about. <clears throat> And that's and now basically see that again, again in the springtime. Yeah, again, we're, you know, these spots are a little bit more prevalent in the spring. Uh, you can see the one on the yeah. back of him right there. You know, and again, we're looking for quality fish. And, you know, this is a good keeper fish, but, you know, uh, eight of these sometimes in a tournament uh, could possibly win the tournament. Um, but the, in most cases, uh, early spring down here, you need a two to a three pound average at least to be in the money. And just because um, that fish has black spots, it is a healthy fish. Oh, yeah, they're very healthy fish. Yep, yep. A lot of them have spots this time of year. He's good and healthy and very active. For the fisherman and hunter, want to show off that trophy and have a lasting memory of your catch? Looking for a taxidermist who is experienced, reasonable priced, and offers a six to eight month turnaround? Look no further. You found Pleasant Springs Taxidermy. Keith Clymer, owner with 10 years experience as a taxidermist, has received many awards. Keith specializes in North American game, African, and exotics. Fish are also a specialty. Why not keep the one that didn't get away? All mounts are customized, and we give special attention to detail. So call today, 257-0730. Pleasant Springs Taxidermy.
Fish and Tales, located in Wrightstown, is the perfect store for fishermen and hunters. For the fishermen, we offer 13 types of live bait, fly fishing supplies, and gear for both fresh and saltwater anglers. For the hunter, Fish and Tales offers hunting equipment and supplies. You can also purchase your fishing or hunting license. Personal service is important. If there's something you don't see in the store, we'll special order it from you from one of our numerous catalogs. For your convenience, our store is open early seven days a week. So stop in any time and trade your fishtails with us. Dale Clements Custom Tackle, the world's largest supplier of custom rod building tools and supplies, located in the Lehigh Valley since 1975. They also carry reels, line, hooks, and lure making equipment. Dale Clements offers a 100-page catalog so you can shop in the convenience of your home. We'll stop by our catalog showroom. We'll have a qualified rod builder to assist you. Dale Clemens features Loomis, Lama Glass, Custom Builder, and All-Star Blanks, along with the best guides, Fuji. So why wait? Call 610-395-5119 or visit us today. First bait I'd like to talk to you to, uh, about is the spinner bait that you were throwing today. Uh, just tell us what it is and go from there. Well, it's a Durstein spinner bait with uh, white on one side, chartreuse on the other, although the all white blade works pretty good, or white with a chrome inside blade works pretty good also. You're imitating a shad, you're, you're coming up with a shad pattern with this bait, a little bit of chartreuse to attract them. Do have a uh, stinger hook on the back end of it, uh, which is what you would use when you're in a tournament. You want to make sure you stick all your fish to hit it. Right. Now you put a trailer on here also, right? Yeah, I've got a double trailer. Um, trailer hook or trailer on the end of this it just gives a little bit more action in the water It'll give a little bit more buoyancy yeah okay we talked another a bit about another search bait and we had some good luck with this one today and uh, what is this, this is a, a bomber yeah it's a bomber 6a uh, bone color um, what I'll do with this bait here is I'll put the next size up larger hook on the rear uh, I'm using an Excalibur twisted style hook which I find I lose less fish on. So I, I'll step up the size of the hook and I'll also go to the Excalibur hook on the rear so you lose again less fish, similar to what the stinger hook does for you on a spinner bait. So if you're in a tournament situation, you really don't want to, you cover all your variables, make sure that you have a, the bigger set of hooks on the back and you should be okay. Bone color, this is what about 6A, do you say? 6A, yeah, it's a bone color bait. Mm -hmm. You Fire tiger, bone color, Two good uh, colors for the Delaware River. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not a really deep diver, too. It's a, a fairly... No, a lot of times you're parallel cranking the bulkheads and things of that nature with this, and a lot of times you're only in five or six foot of water, so you don't really want too deep of a crankbait. And crank what bait. pound test do you run I on this? I have 12 pound uh, strand on there. And do you find yeah, that works pretty well? Works real situation. good. Because yep. we're throwing around a lot of junk, and yep. I literally mean junk today. <laughs> we were throwing around water heaters and all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, you find a little bit of everything floating down here. <laughs> okay, now we, we, we've got our search baits done and you also went to uh, a little plastic worm. Why? Well, um, the fish are, are not being very active today. Uh, we definitely needed to slow down. The smaller baits will definitely do a better job when you get to inactive fish. And um, the purple colored worm or a black and chartreuse colored worm does real good down here on the river. And um, we did it a little different here to look today. We put a split shot ahead of it. Um, you can either use a ball headed jig uh, like I have in my hand here or uh, the split shot rig, depending upon whether or not you're flipping it directly next to pilings or whether or not you're uh, searching an area uh, away from the Pilot. Yeah, because these seemed to do a little bit better. We were throwing in some heavy cover. We weren't getting hung up as much with this little rig, and it was it was doing quite well. Okay, so we have the blue, black, and chartreuse. Any other colors that you might want to? Well, in, in, in the worms, um, the green, a lot of times, the watermelon color is not too bad. Uh, but really, the black and chartreuse and the purple worm. They seem to work well in rivers for some reason. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I just did yeah, the Potomac. Potomac. <laughs> The right. Hudson, same thing. It's uh, the same colored worm in most places. Now we threw the spinnerbait crankbait on conventional bait casters, but we were throwing this on, on spinning gear. And I, you were doing something that was just really neat, and that was you were skipping the baits back up under, which is 
a really neat talent to do because you had to get your bait back up in where you really couldn't cast. And the spinning reel is what spinning rod is what you got to use that yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can skip the ball headed jig pretty easily when it's on one of these worms. Um, the reason we're using a ball headed jig too is because you get more action from the tail of the worm um, if you use a big um, a bullet sinker and a, and a big hook. You won't get the action of the worm, so it works better on a ball headed jig than it does on a. On a worm and, just, and it's got a little bit of a, a wire. Yeah, we have a weed guard on this yeah. also. This skips pretty good. This doesn't skip quite as well, but this this skips real well. Okay, well, I think we should go back and catch some more fish. You've been out fishing me uh, all day today, <laughs> but you promised me you're going to let me get your big one. I... I'm, I'm saving the big one for you, Bob. <laughs> all right, that's the tackle box. Hey, let's get back to doing some fishing here. All right, I'm going to catch a big one. I know I am. Gary, not only is it important to uh, pick out the correct structure, but boat positioning is, is really crucial a lot of times. What are we doing here, and how do you, how do you position yourself uh, with the tide and with structure? Well, what we're doing here right now is we're parallel cranking alongside of these pilings, this old dock that's here, and uh, we want to have the boat uh, against the tide so you're pulling the lure with the tide or against the tide or with the tide excuse me so it looks more natural if the fish is swimming that way the um, the uh, boat positioning part of, of especially tournament fishing is crucial uh, for the rider especially you need to make sure that you talk about it prior to the to the tournament starting that you can go up front and fish alongside of your partner because he could pretty much front end you which is not allowing you to fish, which what I'm doing right now, um, if you were in the back of the boat, you could not fish very well, Bob. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you were standing alongside of me, we would be taking turns alternating our cast right down this, the structure, structure right here. But in this case, it's important that you do position your boat right along this uh, area. Instead of really casting perpendicular to it, you're casting parallel to it gas in parallel to it because we want to cover as much ground as possible um, with this bait while it's in the water and obviously the fish are going to be pulled up next to the pilings and uh, running the lure right past the pilings is obviously the most effective way. Oh, he's nipped up. Oh, come here, come here. He's all bit up. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You pulled the hooks out of him. Large mouth fishing, Delaware River, Tournament Pro. Gary, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You gave me a lot of tips today. And we'll see you again on Delaware Valley Outdoors. Hey, don't forget to see us on our website, www.dvoutdoors.com. You need it. If you're going to fish the river, you got to find out the tides, right? Need the tides, yep. And It'll help you a whole lot. Hey, I'm Bob Murray. I'll see you again.